a church that believes what the Bible teaches, okay, and that none of it went out. I know some people teach that once the Bible was canonized, what that simply means is when the Bible, they decided what all books were going to make up the Bible and all of that, that somehow the Holy Spirit was done. And that's just not the case. All right, we can't say, okay, the Holy Spirit was done in 393 or whenever it was exactly that the, the, the scriptures were canonized or however you want to say it. The Holy Spirit is still very much active in our lives. If we allow Him to be. If we allow Him to be. And we've been talking about that. We've been talking a few weeks about the anointing. We've talked about this anointing according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, that abides in you when you become saved. It's an anointing that abides in you. The, the, the anointing you receive... From Him, from the Lord, from Jesus, abides in you. And again, you remember what we've been saying, that the anointing allows an extraordinary God to do what? Use ordinary people. Because it's not about us, it's about Him. Because I know sometimes we can feel like a bunch of failures, can't we? Come on, we can. Let's be honest with ourselves. We feel like, man, I've done this, I've done that. That's how Peter felt. Peter felt whenever Jesus came and did that miracle, the loaves and fishes. Not the loaves of fish, but the fishes in the boat when he cast out the nets. And uh, all these fish were, were captured in that net. And he, Peter said this, Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. I mean, when he understood who it was that was in that boat and, and the miraculous power. and this, it, it was this, Jesus and just who he was. He began to recognize this. He just thought, I am not worthy to even be in the same boat with you. Lord, just, you just need to get away from me. I'm a, I'm a sinful man. But I love what the Lord said. He says, look, Peter, if you'll follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. Yes. And see, that's what the Lord does. He sees your potential and my potential. Even we can't see it ourselves. He sees what he wants to do. And he does that through the person and work of his Holy Spirit. And that is so amazing to me. And so, again, we, I just want to cover, just recap just a couple of things. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, again, it says, Do you not body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own, you are bought with the price. And again, when we talked about salvation and how Jesus comes into our heart, that just opens the door. You know, this missions trip, this is just something that now that we've been saved, the Spirit of God's come in our life, and, and now He's opened the door for us to go on this missions trip. Uh, you know, and so that's just an opportunity that, that we get. It's, so salvation is not the end all, it's just the door that opens. Like education, you don't just go to get an education, you go in order to, that other doors will be open in your future, that you can use that education for. And so, same way with salvation, it opens so many doors because of the Holy Spirit coming into our lives. So we talked about, in this series, we talked about the, how he, the Holy Spirit enables us to serve, how He enables us to deal with the giants in our life, how He enables us to worship God like we did this morning as well. And then last week we started on this subject about how he enables us to pray. And I wanted to divide this up in two messages, and I've still got a lot of notes here. And I don't know if I'm going to get to them all or not, because I, 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 I don't want to keep you all day. But this is something, you know, as I'm preaching it also and teaching it, I just want you to get, because some people get confused about the part that I'm talking about today, how the Holy Spirit enables us uh, to pray. And even in a language that we have never learned before. We call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, and things like terminology that the Bible uses for this, but I just wanted to share with you this morning, again, I don't want to get so focused on the tongues aspect of it, as I want you to get focused on the reason for the fullness of this Spirit, uh, which of course is to enhance our lives, to, to enable us to, uh, to do what God has called us to do in just a, a more impactful way, it seems. And again, before I just want to hit on this one more time. You know, before, when I got saved, I, I didn't have a church background. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I thank God in a sense that I did grow up in the church because now that I've been in the church a while and been saved for a while, I've seen how there's a lot of doctrines going here and there in the church. Some that say, well, we believe this, but we don't believe that. And we, you know, we believe that part, but we don't really think that part still for today. And I just didn't get that. And so when I, when it came, and when I was like those guys in Acts chapter 19, Paul came up to him and he says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? I thought, well, isn't that how you, how, don't you get the Holy Spirit when you believe? 
Well, yes, you do. But then he was talking about something even beyond that. Because it says, they told him, says, we, we don't even, we've not even heard of that. And he began to ask him, well, what, what did you receive? What baptism were you baptized with? And he gets into all that. And finally he finds out the only baptism they had had up to that point was they were baptized by John, the Baptist. And so he explains to him about Jesus and leads him to Jesus. And then he lays hands on him. The Bible says that they begin to speak with other tongues and prophesy uh, and, and things like this. And you see that over and over again in the book of Acts. You see it in Acts chapter 2. You see it in Acts chapter 8. You see it in Acts chapter 10. You see it in Acts chapter 19. Uh, you see it when Paul was saved. When Paul was saved, he sent, God sent Ananias to him. And he was filled with the Spirit. You say, well, Brother Mike, it didn't say you spoke in tongues. But then when you get to the Corinthians, it says, Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So we know that he did. So it was, and you have to understand, the book of Acts covers a period of about 25 years. Okay? This is a 25-year uh, span of history. And the same Holy Spirit that fell in Acts chapter 2 is still active and, and moving in Acts chapter 19 when these other guys get filled. So we're talking about this, is, this was just something that seemed to be common in the early day church. Uh, it was a part of their discipleship. You know, you get saved because when you get saved, listen, Jesus comes in, but you need the power to be a witness. Amen. And I'm not just talking about power just to say things. I'm talking about a power to live things. Amen. Okay? Power to live for God. And that's what the, the, the fullness of the Holy Spirit helps you to do is to live for God in just a, a greater, more dynamic way, it seems like. Where uh, it just begins to open up doors and gifts to your life that you didn't even realize you had. And so what I'm trying to say is this is, again, salvation is the door where the, the Holy Spirit comes in, but it opens up the door for just so many opportunities and what God wants to do in your life because you didn't know God up to that point, Right? We didn't even know who God was or how He worked or anything. But when that door was open to us, now we're beginning to discover all God, who He is and what He, what he wants and what His purpose is and what His purpose for us is. And we want to fulfill that with the rest of our lives that He gives us. But we sometimes get the mentality some in the church world do today that once we get Jesus, that's it. Amen. And we just kind of stop and do our own thing. And then when it's time to go to heaven, we believe, you know, we're going to heaven. And, and, and so, um, you know, but there's so much more to that. And this scripture, again, we belong to Christ. And, and, and I just wanted you to know my kind of my take on this as far as when I, when I got saved, I didn't know about any of this. I, I just said, God, I, you know, I didn't have a bias one way or the other. You know, I didn't have someone teach me it was wrong or someone teach me it was right. I just read it and said, God, that's for me. I want it. Okay. And I just prayed about it. God, He did it. And it's been a, a great benefit in my life. Now, if you didn't get a chance to listen to the message last week, I want to bring this, this uh, how you can get to the first part of this message up on the screen. If you guys will bring that up. I think it's the next slide. Um, I guess it's not the next slide. I guess I'm going to say it should be a slide there that shows the website. Is that on there, Zach? Yeah, there it is. So if you didn't hear the message last week, uh, isn't that a pretty picture, by the way? Look at those people up there. Aren't they pretty handsome? But anyway. <laughs> yes, they are. Amen. And, and so, uh, but anyway, you can go to where it says media and then the little message things will pop up and it'll pop up to the messages. Um, you know, and what I did with the messages, what I do is I try to go and just condense them down as just a message as opposed to the entire service. And so uh, you can just go and listen to that message again. Um, but that's how you get there. But just so if you didn't hear the first part of the message, because I don't want to try to recover all that again, uh, you can go to online and you can uh, listen to it there. Uh, now, if you'll back up to the scripture, Zach, that was before this, we'll look, look at that for just a second. In that message, it'll cover things like the day of Pentecost, uh, what that is, and when the Holy Spirit came on that particular day. We went over the three baptisms, and uh, then we looked at Peter's sermon where he said uh, himself that this experience is is for all those that the Lord calls to himself. And if you'll bring that up, it's Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Listen, this is the Spirit of God has fallen. People are, some of them are saying, what is going on with these guys? And you have to know it was the feast, and people from all over the world were there, spoke different kind of languages that were there. They all believed in God, but they were from different parts of the, the world at that point. And they wanted to serve the God of Israel, so they came here to celebrate this feast. 
you know, unto the Lord. And so they all spoke different languages and what have you. And, and all of a sudden they hear these guys. You know, there's a, Bob says there's 120 in that upper room. Now, it says they were in a room, but somehow people heard them. So I don't know if they, it doesn't say that they stepped out of the house and started, I don't know what happened, but they heard them, and they heard them speaking uh, to God and praising God in their own language. And they could, some of them thought, well, these guys are just drunk. I mean, they're just carrying on, and uh, they don't, I mean, it just looks weird. Here's a, a Jewish Hebrew guy, but yet he's speaking my language. And you know, that just seems weird, you know. It's like if you ever, you know, if you if you go someone you you know that they're a, a, from a foreign country, or whatever, and all of a sudden they just burp. <laughs> they speak probably better than I do, but they uh, but they just start speaking perfect English. That kind of surprises you a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, because maybe you're expecting them, you know, okay, because you know they're different nationality, because you know we have a different look, different nations have a different look, uh, and, and but then they all of a sudden speak perfect English. It's like that's kind of weird, okay. But to them, it was just like these guys were, were praying and speaking and talking and praising God in their own language. And so Peter addresses that and he tells them this is what was talked about in the Old Testament when Joel said God would pour out his spirit upon all, all flesh in the last days. So that right there, let me just say this as a little side note. You want to know, are we living in the last days? Yes. From that moment. To this moment, these are the last days. Because it said this would happen in the last days. It happened there on the day of Pentecost. And we're still living in these last days. Okay? As far as what the Bible refers to as the last days. Because the Bible says what? With God, a thousand days is what? It's like a, like a day. And a day like a thousand years. And so, but we're living in that. So if you think of it that way, it's only been two days. <laughs> okay? Since throughout Jesus was here. If you think of it in that sense. Uh, but listen, Peter goes on and he's talking to them and they're going, what, Peter, do we need to do? What do we need to do? And Peter responds by saying, you need to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, listen, I want you to hear this, for the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, and I believe that applies to us. We're the ones that are far off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. That this experience is for every person. The Holy Spirit is for every person. Okay? That the Lord calls to himself. And that's so important. So, uh, and then finally in the last message we kind of looked at some scriptures that talked about how the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. And we'll get to those here in just a few minutes. But what does the Bible say about speaking with other tongue, tongues? Now that's not my terminology, that's the Bible's terminology. Acts 2 4 says it this way, and they all they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and to begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What does that mean? Gave them utterance. It means he gave them the words and they just spoke them. Okay? In other words, as he enabled them. See, this is not something you can work up on your own. Some people say, Well, just say what I say and you got it. Okay, that ain't it. The Spirit of God will give you the words. Words that will come to your mind that they will just come up inside of you and words it, it just to you and they just you just let them flow out. I, I can't explain it uh, in any better way. But And all of a sudden you're, you're thinking and you may question yourself even. You know, was that me? Or was that, was that God? Was that me? Or what, what? But, you know, but still I know that that was my own personal. Let me just give my personal testimony. Uh, when I got saved, you know, I, I didn't know anything about anything about God. I just knew there was probably a God in heaven that created all this world. I didn't know anything about it. And so I, I started reading my Bible, started learning. I started a Bible study. I had this dear lady, and, and God used her so greatly in my life. Her name was Mom Powell. We called her Mom Powell. But she was such an impact, had such an impact in my life. She was a retired uh, a uh, lady, her husband has, had passed away when I got at, uh, came to know. But she did a Bible study group for young people. She had a heart for young people. So every, I think it was like Tuesday night or something, we'd go over there. And I remember one night we went over there and we got to talking about the Holy Spirit and about the speaking in tongues. And I, and I thought, wow, I, I think I do remember reading that somewhere because I had been doing a lot of reading in the Bible, but I didn't understand it. And some guy, he said, well, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? And I was like those guys in Acts 19. What are you talking about? 
you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and so I began to research and learn and, and begin to study it. Because that's the kind of person I am. I like to study things out. You know, I, I don't like to take things for granted. And so I did. I began just to pray and ask the Lord to seek this out. And uh, I got saved in my bedroom. I don't know if y'all heard that testimony, but I, got, I asked the Lord into my heart in my bedroom. Uh, reading the gospel track. And then I got filled with the Holy Spirit in my bedroom. I mean, there wasn't anyone, you know, people had prayed for me before, but, you know, I didn't really feel like I received anything. But I was just got down with God and I said, okay, God, if this is of you, you know, let's, here we go. And so, <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, these words just came to me. I began just to speak them out. And I, I honestly, I stopped myself and I thought, is that, is that me? You know, anyone else have that experience? Maybe, I don't know. It just depends. It's different for everybody. So you can't compare your experience with someone else's experience. You know, it's right. unique to you how God does it. But anyway, and, but I noticed it. I was saying the same things. Same, it's like the same phrases, but it was in this language. That, but I noticed I just continued just to yield myself to God. It just it seemed to develop more so. Okay? And, uh, and now it's just like, I don't know, I have a better way to say it. It's like second nature. I can just start praising English before I know it. I don't, I don't even realize it, that I've already... Started praying in the Spirit. And so I want you to know today that this is scriptural. This is something that's in your Bible. And it's for your benefit. Um, and I'm not just doing it just to, so, you know, because I, I, I tell you what, there's a lot of Pentecostal churches that are struggling with talking about the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. Because they're afraid it's going to scare people off. But i got to stand before God one day. i got to stand before the Lord one day. And I can't, I can't leave anything out. You know, there is a heaven, there is a hell, okay, yeah. But we've got to, we've got to get it all out there. And if the Lord said, look, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive this power, it would be wrong for me to, to say, okay, but we really don't need the power. I think we need the power. Okay, I think we need every benefit we can to live out this Christian walk. All right, and so, are y'all going to let me get into this now? Are y'all with me? All right, all right, here we go. So, so please understand that this message is not about just speaking in tongues, but the, the, the primary focus is the power of the Holy Spirit to help you to live a, a Christ-centered life and to be an effective witness for the Lord. Jesus put it this way in Acts 1a. This is right before he ascended into heaven. He says, but you, talking to his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and, the, and to the end of the earth. So you will receive power. Amen. Okay? And it's a power to live. A power to live for me is a power to do the work that I called you to do. He says, I don't want you to go out and do anything until you go to Jerusalem and receive power. Be clothed with power from on high. Luke 24, 49 is where it talks about that. Anyway, so what I want to do this morning is share how the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. And there's two aspects of speaking in tongues that the Bible teaches about. And I think this is where some of the confusion comes in. There is the gift of tongues that is used in a church service where someone may speak. They feel like God has prompted them that God has a message for the church or something. And they prompt and they maybe speak a message in tongues. But there always, in that case, has to be an interpretation. Okay? It's not scriptural. For to be speaking in tongues in a church service and not have an interpretation. And the Bible even teaches that even the one who gave the message in tongues should be ready to interpret that message. Okay, as well. What seemed to be happening in, in, the, book, or in the church of Corinth is, is that it seems like people were being filled with the Holy Spirit. But when they came to church, everybody was praying in their prayer language. And it got confusing. And they weren't really getting anything out of it. So we're going to look into that. This morning, but I want to help you understand there's two aspects of speaking in tongues. One is the gift of tongues where there needs to be an interpretation. But also then there's, there's tongues as a personal prayer language given by God for us to pray to Him. And so first I want to look at this gift of tongues. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 11. And we're going to bring that up on the screen for you. But now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. Let me just tell you, folks, these gifts are still available today. 
I want you to understand that as well. We're talking about the one about the about the gift of tongues in particular this morning. But I want you to know these other gifts are available. And guess who's, who God uses to manifest these gifts? Us, the, the church, Christians. He can use you. He can. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Mike. Yeah, I believe it, Brother. Come on, if we allow him, that's right. We, we believe and trust that he can. Uh, you know, I remember one time, uh, this is totally, it's going to make my message longer. You want me to go there? Yes, okay, I'll go there. And so, I remember I was in Florida, and, and, and I was, before service would start, you know, I'd be praying for the service and all, and I wasn't on staff or anything like that. I was just going to the church while I was in Bible school. But I just remember praying, God, if there's just some way you want to use me in the service at all, I just want to know I'm available. But God, just bless the service. Just touch the people's hearts and just whatever. And God, if there's any way I can be a service, that's fine. But I wasn't going to try to do anything. I just wanted God's blessing on the service. Now, I did work with the youth ministry at that time. I was working with the youth pastor. I was helping him with the young people. And I remember I was praying that. And then when we got into the service, I remember... Uh, this young man, I don't even remember what the, the message was about or anything. I just remember a young man coming to the altar, one of our young people. And man, as I, I, got, I just went down there and just kind of kneeled down beside and I prayed. And I mean, he just started going in these convulsions. I thought, what is that? You know, that <laughs> and I knew it was something bad. It was something evil that was going on. I mean, he just tensed up. And I mean, he, it, it was just... You could tell there was something going on in his, in his body. It, it, and the final later, it was a, it was a demon that it, uh, somehow he got a, just a possessed or, or something. Uh, it had such a stronghold on him. And so I didn't know what to do. And I just, I just, man, so I started just rebuking, rebuking in the name of Jesus. And as I did, it just seemed to intensify. And I thought, wow, what's going on here? And so... I began to pray in the Spirit. And uh, just to myself, not out loud or anything, I just began to pray and say, God, what in the world? <laughs> and, and, and I just prayed and I just felt like the Lord would just start to leave me. He said, tell it to shut up. In Jesus' name. My name. And so I did. I said, you shut up in the name. And I, of course, you know, it sounded like you would just be looking at, why am I telling this? Boy, to shut up. But that's not what it was at all. I was telling the demon that was trying to just take this control of his body to shut up so I could talk to him. Because I would try to talk to him about something. All of a sudden, he would just go, you know. And I just told him, I said, shut up in the name of Jesus. And, and, and it did. And then I was able to talk to the young man. I called him by name. I said, uh, I said uh, well, this is what I said. I said, I just put the word pornography in my heart, in my mind. And I said, are you struggling with pornography? And he, and when I said that, he went nuts again. And, um, and so I had to kind of, you know, by then people were starting to gather around. And I love that people gathered around that didn't run. Yeah. Amen. You know what they were doing? They were they gathered around they started saying, oh, the blood of Jesus. They were just singing things like that. And I thought that was just awesome. And, uh, boy, that tormented, we used to torment that demon. Amen. Woo! <laughs> and, uh, you know, but anyway, and so I just said that, and, and he said, yes, and then he just started, and I just, again, had to kind of, this Lord was teaching me as I was going. I mean, I never dealt with that before, so he was kind of teaching me as I was going. And so I just, again, I rebuked that demon in Jesus' name, and I, and I, and I knew that the young man needed to repent of what, what it was that, you know, that, that stronghold in his life. And I asked him, I said, and after I rebuked the, the and I, let me just say this, when the youth pastor, he told me later, he says, you were beside him, I came in front of him, and he looked up, his eyes looked like cat eyes. I mean, I, that freaked me out too. I'm glad I didn't see that. <laughs> but, but he, so I said that, and, and, and so finally it was the point where I finally was able to get, and he prayed that God would forgive him. And I mean, the moment he did that, it was, you could just, he just went limp. He just went limp and just, just kind of went, and he began to speak in another language. And I thought, and I wasn't even praying for him to get filled with the Holy Spirit. He just, he just, he, all of a sudden, he just, he was just relaxed, totally relaxed. That thing had left, you know, and uh, now his, you know, his, his, 
and, and we just have to be careful because his, his dad was kind of a kind of a religious guy, uh, and he thought because at one point, you know, he and his his dad and his mom kind of got into a little bit of a conflict because dad just wanted to get up and let's go. Thought he was maybe some kind of a put on or something like that, but his mom said, "No, honey, this no, we do not. He need this. God is doing something in his life." And so they, but anyway, he let him stay there, and. Uh, and I'm just saying that was just a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And then later I said, we went to his house and he said, and he had just a closet full of just magazines and stuff. And uh, got rid of them, you know. And so I'm just saying, that was the Holy Spirit. That, you know, that's not, that has nothing to do with me. That's just simply the work of what the Holy Spirit can do. And we don't need that. We don't need to limit him. And, and, and I guess I said all that to say this. All these gifts are available to anyone that's willing. Anyone that's willing for God to use them, these gifts are available for you. Gifts of healing. God can use you to pray for people and they can be healed. you got to believe that, though. Just like you got to believe in salvation, you got to believe that God can use you in the gifts of the Spirit. And the Spirit will distribute them as He sees fit, the Bible says. Not according to you, but according to what He sees fit and what, need, what is needed at the time. Anyway, that was not part of the notes at all. But... I just, I don't know, I just felt led to share that. Um, so anyway, in the church there at Corinth, you know, he was, Paul was dealing with this. And I think I stopped around verse 9. Anyway, it says, To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gift of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits or discerning of spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to, still to another the interpretation of tongues. These are the work, are the work of the one and the same Spirit, as and He distributes them to each one just as He, the Holy Spirit, determines. So again, it seemed like in the church of Corinth there was this uh, confusion, there was some disorder happening in their public gatherings, and so Paul addresses this by giving them some teaching, and you'll find this in, in 1 Corinthians 14. Paul says this in verses 18 and 19. He says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, and I've got this underlined here in your, uh, on the screen. In church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Okay? So again, it seems like what was happening in this church is everybody was praying in their prayer language and, and tongues. And Paul says, listen... That's in church, it's really not doing anybody any good. Unless there's an interpretation. Okay? He's saying, you know, I, it would be like when we go to Honduras, if I don't have an interpreter, if I were to say something, or if that person didn't have an interpreter when they're saying something to me, I don't, I'll just be lost. I mean, I'm sure it's good, and I'm, I'm sure, I, you know, hope it all works out, but I have no idea what you just said. You know? And that's kind of what Paul is saying. That in a church service, if there's tongues, there needs to be an interpretation so that the whole body can be built up by it. But if everybody comes and no one understands what anybody's saying, then the body's not getting built up. It's like if I came up here this morning and I knew German or, or something and I preached this whole message in German, it wouldn't do you a bit of good. You'd just say, man, I'm sure he was getting something out of it, but I didn't get anything out of that. Okay, does that make sense? That's kind of what Paul was saying. And so it seems that everyone was praying maybe in their prayer languages, in the church service, more than, than with just words that pe people could actually understand. And it may have looked or even sounded spiritual, but it wasn't doing anything uh, for the church as a whole. So Paul explains how uh, tongues should be done in a church setting. And the main teaching for public church settings where tongues are spoken is that there should always be an interpretation so that everyone is benefited. It's in 1 Corinthians 14, 27. It says this, If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at the most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. All right? So it says, if, if this happens in a service, and it doesn't mean it's required to happen even in every service or anything like that. But if it does, this is how you need to regulate that. All right, so this was the gift of tongues. A lot of people, this is where they get confused with this gift that's being used like in a church setting as opposed to a personal prayer language that God gives to every believer. But it seems what was happening here is they people were using their prayer language. Everybody was using it in the church service and nobody was getting anything out of it. He says, so in a church setting, there needs, if there's going to be a message given out, outspoken in tongues, there needs to be an interpretation. Does that make sense? 
And so let me let me tell you a little bit about um, uh, and as Paul's explaining this to them and talking to them, to them about this, he also gives some insight about what happens when a ter person does pray in another language or other tongues. Okay, uh, and some people would even refer to this prayer language as a grace of tongues. Now that's not a scriptural word. I've just heard it. You know, the, the gift of tongues, because everybody says, well, I don't have that gift. Well, do you understand that gift is, 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 that we're talking about in 1 Corinthians 12, that's a gift that's used in a church setting. When we're talking about the filling of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about this is something that is available for every single believer. All right, so let me, let me just move on with this. All right, uh, so in dealing with tongues, uh, the tongues issue, and they're using the purpose public church setting, Paul explains the purpose and benefit of speaking in tongues also to the believer personally. And so here's a couple of points I just want to give you concerning uh, speaking in tongues or in particular the prayer language. Number one is it is scriptural. It is scriptural. Okay? When speaking in tongues, in other words, a language you've not learned before, you didn't go to school for it, you just speak in this language that you've never learned before, you, the Bible says, are speaking to God directly. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says this. Paul said, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands the Spirit. He speaks mysteries. In the Spirit. Now, let me just differentiate here, because notice there's a small s on the Spirit. In other words, it's your Spirit that is praying. The Holy Spirit is is is. Doing something. I, I can't even explain. But there's there's an interaction between the Holy Spirit and your spirit that's taking place. And it's your spirit, that innermost part of you, that is actually doing the prayer. Okay? And so, notice he says, He who speaks in the tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. All right? So he's speaking to God. It's not, in this case, a message from God. In this case, we're talking about he's speaking to God. Yes. Note the phrase, in the Spirit, he speaks mystery. So in prayer and tongues, you are praying to God with your spirit. And then in verses 14 through 17, I'll look at verse 14, Paul says this, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Okay, the reason, I'll just give you a... This was not a typo, but every time I try to put spirit next by itself, it always capitalizes it in my program. But I want you to understand this is not, it, it, this, is, this is the Holy Spirit interacting, but this is your spirit praying. Okay, it's the Holy Spirit interacting. We're going to see that here in just a moment too. But the Holy Spirit interacting with your spirit where you're actually praying. But notice what it says, my mind is unfruitful. In other words, I don't understand. I don't know what I'm praying. I don't understand what I'm praying. But God does. Okay? And that's what's so important. So my, my, my spirit prays, my mind is not getting anything out of it as far as, you know. And I, you guys have seen, I've done messages on this before, and I showed you the video where they had, uh, they did an experiment with a person who was like, I think they were a monk or something, and then a spirit-filled, what we call a spirit-filled Christian. And the monk, you know, it was more meditating, and they actually put these little diodes on their head, and showed it on the monitor, and you could see that there was a, a lot of things going on there because it turned a certain color to show that the mind was very engaged in it. But it showed, same, then the lady got in there, and she started just worshiping and praising the Lord in the Spirit. I had her, the dial hooked to her head and to her brain area, and it showed nothing because her mind was not engaged. It was her spirit that was praying. And that's what that scripture is talking about. That, that just confirmed what the Bible already says. Just this scripture right here. For if I pray in a tongue or my spirit's praying, my mind is unfruitful. It's not in you. All right, so let me move on. There's some other things you need to know about this. So verse 15 says this. What is the conclusion then? Paul says, I will pray with my spirit or with the spirit. And I'll also pray with the understanding. In other words, I'll pray in my prayer language, but I'll also pray in the same. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. All right, so Paul says, you know, I will pray with my Spirit. Verse 14 says that praying in a tongue is my Spirit praying. Verse 15 is saying, I will pray with a tongue, and I will also pray with my understanding. Notice Paul, how Paul says it, I will pray with the Spirit. 
That is, pray in tongues, and I will pray with the understanding. All right? So, Paul says he would do the same thing when it came to singing. And then verse 16, he goes on to say this. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit. Okay, that's with the Spirit. You know, when we say a prayer, what, sometimes what do we call that? We say, we're going to say a what? A blessing. All right? So we know we're talking about prayer. And so we know that's what Paul's talking about. So if you bless with the Spirit, in other words, if you're praying in your prayer language with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen to you giving a thanks? In other words, if you're praying in another language, how are they going to say amen to it? Because they don't know what you're saying. That's, that's basically what he's talking about there. All right? At your giving of thanks, which is another form of how we say, uh, which is another way of saying a prayer, giving a thanks. Like we get thanks for this food or whatever. Anyway, so how, again, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen to your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you're saying? All right? So again, Paul is saying if you pray in tongues where people are gathered, they're not going to understand you. But the point is that you can pray in tongues. And Paul calls it praying with the Spirit, your Spirit. Okay? You're engaged with the Holy Spirit. So Paul calls praying in tongues, praying with the Spirit. Some even have argued, and I've already hit on this, but some argue that Paul himself didn't speak in tongues. But again, go down to verse 18. Paul says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. But then he goes on to say, but in a church setting, I'm not going to do that. Because it can cause confusion if you got people that come in uh, that are uh, unbelievers or what have you, or people that want people say that you're kind of nuts if everybody's just speaking in tongues. I would say that. Okay. Yeah. And so, so that's important. We understand that. So that's not to say that you, you know. So when we. When you come in, and, and I have no problem like when people come together like a prayer meeting. And people are just spiritual Christians come together. I have no problem. I don't think it's a problem at all for everyone just to, if they want to, just to pray their prayer language. Because everybody understands this is not, you know, odd to someone. But you don't want to put someone who's, who maybe doesn't understand in that awkward position. Okay? Uh, but at the same time, you know, but there can be a message in tongues in church. But there needs to be an interpretation. Okay, and this would be something like in the usually the way this works, we like maybe it's a time where we're worshiping God, and all of a sudden there's just kind of a lull, you know, to kind of just a kind of enjoy the presence of the Lord. And maybe one of you, the Lord comes upon you and says, "I want you to give out this message." And He's probably more likely already given. A lot of times I've found when it's been I've used that way, He's already given you the interpretation. A lot of times, but it's not to share your opinion. <coughs> Okay, about something is to really feel like God wants you to share something that will be a benefit to the church as a whole. Okay, and and so an encouragement, a strengthening, or something that will come that way. Um, and so again, we just need to understand Paul was making the difference between these two. All right, so Paul, people, you know, sometimes they'll they'll have a bias when they and they'll look right over the scriptures they don't agree with or they don't want to deal with, and Paul. Uh, looked at verse at verse 39, Paul says, do not forbid. He said this in verse 39. Paul said, do not forbid to speak in tongues. Okay? So he's not saying, okay, tongues is bad. It should never be done. He said, no, tongues are all right. That's great. They are a benefit. And we'll look at that another in just a moment. But in a church setting, if everybody's speaking in tongues and there's nobody praying or saying anything in a natural language, no one's getting anything out of it. That's what he's trying to address here. And then the second thing about speaking in your prayer language or, or being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a benefit. It's a benefit. It's a benefit to pray in a prayer language. Verse 4 says this, He who speaks in a tongue edifies who? Himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. So he's saying in a church setting, if you're speaking in tongues, that's okay as long as there's interpretation. All right? Because when you're praying in tongues, you're just edifying yourself. In other words, you are building yourself up. Not prideful in a prideful way, but it's, build, it's doing something in you spiritually that, that strengthens you, that enhances your spiritual life. I can't explain all there is about it. I just know that it does. Okay? I can tell you there's times, and I, I mentioned this the other day, I, I'm driven down the road or just been doing something just random, 
And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, man, I'll just feel like some oppression just came against me. Has anyone ever dealt with that before? And immediately I've learned that when that happens, if that ever happens, I'll start praying in the Spirit. Because I have no idea what I'm, I'm going against at that point. And as I do that, literally, I promise you, before the Lord, I sense that just start to, to leave me. Because I know the Spirit of God knows exactly what it was, and He's praying accordingly. And I'm even going to show you in the Scripture just a moment where that's part of your armor. Praying in the Spirit is part of your armor. But I'm not going to get to that yet, but I do want to talk about this part here first. It says, He who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Edify, again, means to build up. So what's, what's wrong with that? So Paul, it seems like what he's doing here is dis distinguishing between private and public. In private, yes, pray in your prayer language so you can be built up. But in a public, pray with your understanding so that people can understand and they can be edified and built up. So really, that's the whole summation of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in essence, is, is you know, just distinguishing that. So look at it this way. When you read your Bible in private, who gets built up? You do. But if you read in a public setting, who gets built up? Everybody does. Okay? So I think that's the way you can kind of look at that as well. So uh, it's personal. It's something between you and the Lord as far as we're talking about your prayer language, you know, um, and just talking to God. But remember how, how, how Paul used the phrase, in the Spirit, and he was referring to, to tongues. And uh, let me show you again something else. This is what I was talking about, the, the uh, armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the armor of God. It talks about the helmet of salvation, uh, shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, uh, belt of truth, and all these things. And sometimes we get to verse, I think it's verse uh, 17, and we stop. Mm -hmm. But it's, notice it says this, and I'll bring it up on the screen. We'll bring it up here. It says, take the heaven of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then listen to what it says next. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Now here it does use the capital S because it's talking about the Holy Spirit being engaged here, okay? And that's part of praying in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always engaged in this. This is something He does, all right? And so the notice this is part of the armor. Part of the armor. It's not just to put on these pieces of armor, these spiritual pieces of armor, but he says, and pray when? Every chance you get. Yeah, on all occasions. Alright? Pray in the Spirit. Alright? He says that. And so, uh, again, another first uh, verse is found in Jude chapter 20. I always say that. Jude chapter 1, because there's only one chapter. <laughs> verse 20. But anyway, it says this, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So it's saying building yourself up, praying in the Holy Spirit. So again, it goes back to verse 4, 1 Corinthians 14. He who prays in the tongue builds himself up. You're building yourself up. So the benefit of praying in the Spirit or praying in tongues is that it builds you up. And I would ask you this. Does any of you feel like you've been built up enough? I'll answer it for you. No, you have not. Okay? If you don't want to listen uh, or, or, or speak it out, rather, then I'll, I'll help you out. None of us have been are built up enough. We can always use building up. It doesn't take but just one episode, one circumstance, one situation, and the devil can start trying to bring you down. But that's when it's just, when you're just going to pray, and, and just when you don't know how to pray, the Spirit of God, you just let Him pray through you. And just connect with your Spirit. Let your Spirit pray. Don't even engage your mind. You know, just let it, let it flow. Okay? And, and this morning I've asked someone to come uh, talking about this subject and just how this has benefited their life. And he has no idea exactly what he's going to say. He just knows that he's going to get up there and say whatever God puts on his heart to say. And so, Coker, would you come? And I'm going to get you a microphone here. For someone, uh, my mic. Yeah. Um, start off with, I, I say here and tell you, I'm not a perfect man. I fall short. Um, but I know who my Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. And I, I ask for forgiveness, and through Him all things are possible. And uh, my preacher called me this week. Uh, I told him just what he just said. I wasn't going to write anything down. I was just going to uh, 
let, let it come out what he want me to say. I've been praying about this all week. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple man. I, I fell short. I was raised in church all my life. I mean, every Sunday my mom and dad had, had me there. It was a, it was a Baptist church. And believe me, it's totally different than what we have here. Uh, you know, I've never seen anybody, you know, raise their hands or, you know, speak in tongues and until I visited the other church over there. And I asked Lisa, I said, uh, you know, some of y'all probably done heard this, but, you know, some of them probably hadn't. I said, do they go to school to learn how to do that? <laughs> she said, no. I said, wow. I said, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I like it. And then uh, I, I was growing in, in the Lord. And when uh, my mom was, she was, She was uh, suffering with some depression, and she wanted some, some prayer. So we, I don't remember what day of the week it was. I called preach, and we came down to the church, and I told him, I said, I, I woke up other night praying in the spirit, man. He said, oh, really? I said, yeah. I said, I, I think that's going to be for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was me and Tracy and Tracy and Mom preach and we went back into his office there and we started praying for mom and I don't know if it was preach or whoever it was man it's just like something hit me in my chest man I don't remember nothing from then uh, we got through prayer with mom and preach I look at preach I see his face right now he said hey brother you did it that's a danger. Oh. <laughs> you know, this, this is me. <laughs> he probably didn't say that. So this is my, my way to go, you know. I, this is what I'm trying to get to, y'all. Uh, if he can take a person like me that can't speak good in English and use me to speak in another language, hey, it's for all of y'all. But if it is for me, for a, 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 a sinner, a... A man that, man, he had an awful life for us. A drug dealer, drug user. Man, I was up for weeks at a time doing things I shouldn't be doing. And if he can change me and use me and a person like me, which aggravates and carries on a bunch of junk all the time with somebody of some word, and if he can use me to do that, and as the preacher was saying this morning, it edifies himself, believe me. There is no drug, there is no feeling whatsoever that you can take or you can do to get that feeling when that comes upon you. Hey, let me tell y'all right now, there ain't nothing like that. Nothing. Uh, he's about to get me now. <laughs> I got him on the phone the other day. Yeah. yeah we, we just went on. But you know, we was, I was having a bad day at work. It's 8.30 in the morning. This is on Thursday. You know, preacher said something to me last, last Sunday, you know, about doing this. And I said, well, it doesn't get past Wednesday. He ain't called me. I said, man. I said, I ain't worth nothing no more. And then when preacher called me on Thursday morning, about 8.30, I mean, I was having a bad day. I was finna fire that jerk as soon as he come in the door. He's supposed to have been there at 6 o'clock. He went there at 8.30 and I was sweating and I was, I was pretty, pretty ill. And then when preach asked me, I said, you know, you know, God has timing for everything. And he knows what I needed when I, whenever preach called me. Because my whole thought process, my whole everything changed in, 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 a, in a, just an instant. You know, my, I went from what the devil already knew that the preach was going to call me. And, and asked me that, so he was wearing me out, man. I mean, he was he was bearing down on me. And you don't have to be a perfect person. Right. You don't have to be, you know, have everything right because you don't. Because I don't. And, and, and there is nothing in this world, and it's for everybody. If it can be for me, believe me. If it can be for a man like me, the way I used to be, it can be for you today. Right now, uh, and it, it can happen. But there's nothing in this world. And, and when I told preach, I said, I am worth something. 
that that day I said, well, I guess I am worth something, man. When I said that, now, my spirit just uplifted and I couldn't even keep my feet on the ground. But it, it was good and I, and I appreciate the Lord letting me get up here and say this because you know I, you know, I, ain't, I fall short and, and, and I'm still a human being, but I'm still a Christian and I know who my Lord and Savior is and I know who my Creator God is and I know my Holy Spirit. And I know what my calling is, and I, I think within my heart that my calling is to pray for people. I pray for people all day long. I'm, I'm praying for, I pray for all y'all. And, and, you know, it, it may be different parts of the day, and, and just like Preach said, he gets that oppression. I, I get that oppression a lot. And I, I think that's what my calling is, is, is to pray. And, but you know, again, we all fall short of the glory of God. And, and no matter who you are, I just know that it's for everybody. If you can, if you want it, you can get it. It'll edify you, it'll help you, it'll build you up. And I mean, it, it's, it's really a great feeling. And I hope it's for, for you if you hadn't got it yet. Yeah, I remember that experience when your mom came in and Coker, he just, he was gone. He was just lost. Just, I mean, he was just in the, I don't know, he was like in the third heaven or somewhere, I guess. But uh, anyway, he finally, you know, when things kind of settled down, I said, well, because he'd been seeking the experience. And I didn't know that he'd already been, you know, filled uh, before, like you said in your, just then. So I didn't realize that at the time. But I said, man, so you got it. He goes, got what? I said, you know, got filled with the Holy Spirit. He goes, what are you talking about? I mean, he was just, and I, I'm just saying, it's just different for different people. Okay, so don't expect that your experience was going to be the same as his experience. You know, it may be like me. It may be just, okay, God, I'm ready, Lord, you know, and he just by faith starts speaking. I'm saying, you know, I mean, it could be just whichever. It could be some awesome, glorious experience, or it can just... Just have the Lord. He knows you personally. He knows how you click and how you tick. So he'll, he deals with you personally on a personal level. But Coker, thank you so much for, for sharing that uh, with us this morning. That was such a blessing. I'm going to just close with this one last scripture here. Paul said, if I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays. And why it's so important that this is, again, talking about your prayer language. The whole point of this message is that the Holy Spirit will enable you and help you to pray. And Romans 8, 26 says this. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps also, uh, helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for, as we are. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. In other words, God knows exactly what the Holy Spirit and your Spirit is praying for. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And this is where this other scripture, we quote this last scripture, but some people don't realize the other two scriptures are before it. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. In other words, the Spirit of God, when he is helping you and he is helping you to pray and interceding for you, all things will work together for good. That's what that scripture is, is, is teaching us. We allow the Holy Spirit to take over. And He's praying. He's always going to pray the right thing. If you want to know, how do I know if I'm praying in the will of God? Just let the Holy Spirit help you. Amen. Okay? And just pray. And let Him, just let your spirit pray. And just don't, you know. You say, Brother Mike, how do I do that? Well, I, I, there's no formula for it. Okay? Uh, there's really no formula for it. And, and it's different people. Some people receive that. You know, maybe in their prayer closet, it could be around an, an altar or just praying for people to be filled. But whatever it is for you, I just I just want you to be open to that. That's a gift. That's a benefit that God has for you. And He wants you to have it. We need it. Matter of fact, Jesus told us, says, guys, go get this before you go out and minister. Amen. Okay? And, and, and get you need to have the Holy Spirit working in, in charge of your life. And so I encourage you, if you've never experienced that before in your life, all I'm asking you this morning is just be open to that.